what's up gorgeous welcome back to another video today's video is the second episode of the soul searching series and today we are talking about annalise mitchell she is the inspiration for the movie the exorcism of emily rose and let's get into it September 21st, 1952, Annalise Mitchell is born to Joseph and Anna Mitchell in Germany. They grew up in a very strict household with three of her aunts being nuns and her father even training for priesthood at one point. Four years before she was born, Annalise's mother gave birth to an illegitimate daughter, Martha, to which Annalise his mother told her she needed to atone for her mother's sins through fervent devotion. This worsened when Martha died at age 8 due to complications of surgery to remove a kidney tumor. This led to Annalise living a long life trying to atone for the sins of others. When she was a teenager, she would sleep on the hard cold floor of her house to atone for the sins of wayward priests and drug addicts who were often seen laying on the cold stone floors at the train station. When she was 16, she blacked out at school and then walked around in a trance-like state, although she doesn't remember this occurrence by herself. She only knows it based off of what witnesses and her family told her. A year later, she had a similar occurrence where she woke up in a trance-like state, wet the bed, and had a series of convulsions. For this event, Annalise goes to a neurologist who diagnoses her with epilepsy, which can cause seizures, memory loss, and visual and auditory hallucinations. She started a medication in 1973 for this, and then she goes to the University of Würzburg? It's spelled like this, but in German, the W makes the V. I don't, this. In her dorm, she hung posters of saints. She kept holy water by the entrance of the dorm and she was she spent a good bit of her time at university praying. She eventually started seeing devilish faces during her prayers and although she stayed on her anti-convulsant medication she said it wasn't helping her any, and she started to believe that she was possessed because she was only seeing these faces when she was praying. Eventually, she started hearing whispers of these things telling her that she was damned and she was going to hell because she hadn't atoned for someone's sins. The first instance in which someone mentioned to Annalise that she might be possessed is when she was on pilgrimage and the lady had noticed that Annalise refused to walk by this one particular image of Jesus and that she refused to go to the Holy Spring. Eventually her condition started to get worse and she was also seeing these devilish faces everywhere she went now, not just when she was praying. They were haunting her and telling her that she was going to hell. And for someone who grew up strictly Catholic and did everything they could for the sins of others, she, this only made everything worse. The court had determined that by 1973, Annalise was suffering from depression and probably considering suicide. She started to seek out priests who turned her down, telling her that, one, they would need um, permission from a bishop to do an exorcism, but also that she needed medical attention. They were trying to tell her this. Her mother also started seeking out priests to perform an exorcism when everyone started to believe that Annalise was truly possessed. 
After being turned away, Annalisa's condition severely worsened and her delusions became extreme. She started convulsively doing 400 squats a day for a teenager. Um, she commonly took off her clothes just randomly. She started eating coal and spiders and she even bit off the head of a dead bird once. It was not unusual for her to urinate in the floor and then lick it up. There was one occasion where she crawled under the table and barked like a dog for two days straight. Annalise's mother finally found a priest who believed her possession and later stated for the court she didn't look like an epileptic. Side note, epilepsy is not a disease you can see or a disorder you can see. Um, but that's what he said in the um, court document. Annalise wrote to him and said, I am nothing. Everything about me is vanity. What should I do? I need to improve. You pray for me. And that just goes to show that she was truly beginning to believe that she was possessed and that she that everything was happening to her because she was chosen to atone for the sins of other people. She also had said to him, I want to suffer for other people, but this is so cruel. Alt petitioned the bishop who appointed a local priest, Arnold Renz, to perform the exorcism if it were to be done in total private. Exorcisms were first popular in the 1500s as a Christian ritual and the instructions of how to do one were in a book called Ritual Roman... I'm trying to remember the spelling of it. It's the Roman ritual but flipped around because language until like this whole time period in the 60s like exorcisms weren't happening they were very rare until movies like the exorcist brought their um, popularity back it became kind of like just a part of pop culture to look into doing an exorcism and to have one done over the next 10 months, Annalise underwent a total of 67 exorcisms that each lasted about 4 hours. During these possessions, Annalise revealed that she was possessed by demons like Adolf Hitler, Cain, Lucifer, Nero, and a disgraced Frankish priest. It seemed as though these demons had a power struggle within her during these exorcisms and some of their voices were caught on tape, which can be heard online. I'm not going to play any of the audio because I don't know what kind of um, copyrights are on, on demon voices of exorcisms. And I don't want to risk it. During these sessions, Annalise broke several bones, including her knees, and the tendons and ligaments in her knees were severely stretched and tore due to her constantly falling onto her knees in prayer. This motion is called genuflexion. Flexion. I'll put it here. And when she was too weak to do it herself, this was towards the end of the exorcisms. Her mother would, and her father sometimes would support her and do the motions for her. That's how serious they were taking this when she couldn't even move herself, they were doing it for her. Annalise would often be physically restrained so that she wouldn't disrupt the motion of the exorcisms. 
Annalise eventually quit eating and drinking on her own, believing that she had to fast to rid herself of the influence of the devil. She refused food when it was offered to her from her sisters, and no one else tried to intervene. So when she was very, very weak and on the verge of death, she told her executioners, begged for absolution, and she told her mother, just simply, Mother, I am afraid. And these were the last words of Annalise Mitchell when she died during her exorcism. Her parents and the two priests were all arrested for negligent murder, and the two priests were charged with murder by negligence, and her parents got away for dealing with so much already being the death of their daughter, which is how a Germanic law works. She was 23 years old when she died of dehydration and malnutrition, although she also had a severe case of pneumonia at the time of her death. She was buried on the outer portion of the cemetery next to her sister Martha and the area of this graveyard is typically for illegitimate children like her sister and for suicides. Two years after her death her body was exhumed for the excuse that they wanted to move her body into a more expensive casket. Um, however the real reason her parents wanted her body to be exhumed is because a Carmelite nun had told the family that she had a vision where Annalise's body was still intact. Her parents were barred from seeing the body after it was exhumed, although reports say that her body was decomposing like it should be for the time. No photos of the body were ever released. In 2005, the movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose was released loosely based off of Annalise's story. Although the movie is mostly based off of the courtroom happenings, it does have flashbacks to the events that led up to the courtroom happenings, which heavily imitate what happened to Annalise. Some speculate that Annalise was just copying what she could have possibly seen in the movie The Exorcist, which was released in Germany in 1974, and this is a plausible theory, although it doesn't explain the activity that she had before 1974, but it could influence the severe increase of delusions and hysteria that she had after 1974. The thing that was brought up in the courtroom by priests who testified was the, the acknowledgement of priest and the continued search for someone to do an exorcism did that further implant the idea of possession to Annalise and it could. This is referred to as doctrinaire induction by and it just pretty much says that repeating my daughter's possessed, help me, over and over again, and after hearing it from the first time on the pilgrimage, every time after that just could have potentially further implanted the idea into her head that she was possessed, whether or not she was, because now we can look back and we see that her early symptoms um, imitate the symptoms of schizophrenia. And if she had been treated for such at the time, maybe it wouldn't have escalated to where it was. And that's the story of Annalise Mitchell. Was she actually possessed? Was she sick and in need of treatment? Were the priests at fault for her death? Were her parents? Was anything supernatural involved in her death? These
these are questions that people want answered and that play around with the idea in movies. But it's still, regardless of what the real reasoning was, it's just cool that we can take it up for interpretation. It's one of these things that there is no right or wrong answer. Let me know what you think about the story in the comments or DM me on Instagram. Um, let me know what cases you want to hear about, what stories. I'm open to talk about anything in soul searching, so just let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go check out some more, like and subscribe, um, and have a great day.